Now, the Department of Pension under the Ministry of Treasury has announced that all pensioners have to register on their new registration portal. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do that. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first thing I want you to do is to come and search for eCitizen and click on the first link. Then move and click on this link, one log in, and this page will load. Now here we have to enter either the email address or the ID number. For this case, we are going to use the ID number and I'm going to put the ID number just like that. And then we are going to input here the password for his eCitizen account. So just give me a moment and then after that, I'll click on sign in and here we'll have to choose where to send the otp i'll choose the phone number and then i will enter the otp as it has been sent on his phone and then click next and then here we've been able to log in to his e-citizen account after logging in i want you to come and click on national and then I want you to scroll down and look for the National Treasury and Economic uh, Planning. And after clicking there, you can read through the overview and some few things here to know about the National Treasury. What I want you to do is to come and click on the National Treasury and then come and click on Pensioner Self-Registration Portal. And then this will load. You can read through these very uh, guidelines. But I made a video uh, explaining this. So if you did not watch that video, please find a link up here. Now that we have all these requirements, the third step is the registration process. Now, after you've read through this, come and click I have read and understood, then click proceed. Now here you will select the user type if it is the principal pensioner, dependent spouse or dependent child. For this case is the principal pensioner and then click proceed. Now here you'll need to enter the pensioner's ID number and I'm going to do it just like um, that. And then here you'll enter the payroll number. If he was a teacher, you'll enter the TSE number just like that. If you know the pensioner number, you can put it here, although it's not a must. So I'll click on proceed. And then it will scan and find the pensioner's details. It will show you the full name, the ID number, the employer number, and the pension number. So just click on I confirm. And then here you'll now put a valid email address. Be sure to put here a valid email address because they will send their communication through the email address. So I'm going to put in the email address and then I'll click on proceed. Now we need to put the active phone number. Also be sure to put an active phone number to avoid cancellation of this very registration. Then click proceed. We now need to set a password. Your password should have at least eight characters, contain uppercase, lowercase, digit, and a special character. Once all these are green, you know that you are okay. You need now to re-enter the password. So I'm just going to re-enter the password that I put earlier on. And then when they match, you need to click on proceed. Okay, so we'll give it some time to load. And here, now we need to log in. The account has been created. You can use the email address or the phone number to log in plus the password that you put. For this case, I used the phone number. Now we need to fill some fields here to finish the form. Now your personal details, you need to select the nationality and you will choose Kenyan. The identity type, it is national ID. Uh, so you'll choose national ID. Then you'll enter the national ID number for the pensioner here. And then you'll upload the front side of the ID, which you scanned. So I'm going to do that pretty quick. So just give me a moment. I locate it. Here it is. And then click open. After that, we now need to upload the back side of the ID, which I'm going to do pretty quick. Here, we are going to write the KRA pin for the pensioner. And so make sure also the KRA pin is the right one. Do not guess. So I'm going to write here the KRA pin 
And after that, uh, these are already filled. So last employer, you need to put here the last employer. For this case is TSC. And then you'll write here the surname for the pensioner. And after that, we need to put here the first name for the pensioner, just like that. And then write, uh, after that, we have the middle name for the pensioner, although it's not a must. Uh, for this case, he has a middle name, so we're going to put it just like that. Marital status, you have to choose from this list. So for my case is married, so I'm going to choose married. For gender, you have to choose who is male, and then you have to put here the date of birth, starting with the day, month, then the year. And after that, you will choose whether he's disabled or not. For this case, is no. And once you feel that, you come here and click next. Okay, just give it a moment to save. Now, part two is the permanent contact address. We now need to put here information. About the country, it's Kenya, so you select Kenya. Uh, county, you select the county for your client. The sub-county, you have to select the sub-county as it is. The constituency, also, we are going to select the constituency. Uh, now, the city, you have to write here the city that uh, the pensioner is coming from. Then the location, you'll also need to put here the location according to the identification card. Do not guess. The village, you also put here the village uh, from which the pensioner comes from. The landmark, you can put here the nearest primary school. Uh, you can use the primary school as the landmark, uh, just like that. And then the postal address, you'll ask your pensioner uh, the postal address. And then here you'll choose the postal code. After that, I want you to click on next and give it some time to save. Now the bank details. Now the account type, is it a bank or SACO? For this case, it's a SACO. And then you'll choose the name of the SACO, which is IG. Then the SACO branch, you choose the SACO branch just like that. The account name is usually the full name for the pensioner. So we are going to write here the account name. But you need to check on the card uh, which name has been put as the account name. But I'm pretty sure it will be the full name. Now here you need to put the account number. Again, be very careful when you are writing here the account number because they are going to cross-check with their system. And if you put here a wrong account number, this application is going to be nullified. You have to re-enter the same account number. And here now you have to upload the uh, either circle plate or the bank plate and make sure that everything on the card is legible. Now we need now to click next. Next, we now need to fill the beneficiary. You choose the relationship uh, with the beneficiary. For this case, it was the wife. Then you choose if they are deceased or not. For this case, no. And then you are going to now choose the ID type, which is the national ID for this case. Now you need to put here the ID number for the beneficiary, who is the wife. So we are going to write here the ID number. Then you'll write the son name as it appears on the ID card. You'll put here the first name as it appears on the ID card. And then if they have the middle name, you'll have to put it here, although it's not a must. But for this case, they have. And uh, the email address, you also need to put here a working email address for the beneficiary. I'm going to do that pretty quick. And then you'll put here a functioning phone number for the beneficiary, just like that. You'll now put here the KRA pin for the beneficiary, not for the pensioner, remember. Then here you'll put the postal address for the beneficiary and again the postal code for the beneficiary. After that, uh, you can discard or save. For this case, we'll click on save. The beneficiary details have been captured. I want you to click on next. Here we we'll now put the details for the next of kin. For this case, also is the wife. So I'll click to add. And then I had already done this. So we are repeating the same thing. So I'm not going to cover everything here. Uh, we've already filled this thing in the previous slide. So I'm going just to... Uh, just fasten this so that we don't waste a lot of time. And then click save. The next of kin data has been captured. Click next. 
here we now need to check the uploads we uploaded this remember the bank plate the national id front and the national id back you can replace if you wish but for this case just click next here we have additional information and they're asking you which type of pensioner you are registering so for example we have uh, the first one is parliamentary pension, a pension granted to individuals who have served as members of parliament, providing financial support upon retirement. Second is civil pension, a pension provided to government employees or civil servants upon retirement based on their years of service. Injury pension offers financial assistance to civil servants affected by injury, helping them maintain their quality of life. Maintenance pension managed through agencies. This pension supports individuals requiring long-term financial assistance under structured care. Military, a pension awarded to retired military personnel acknowledging their service to the nation. Dependent pension provides ongoing financial support for dependents on deceased pensioners ensuring their sustained welfare and stability. And lastly, we have military disability pension offers financial assistance to ex-military officers affected by disability in line of duty, helping them maintain their quality of life. So you'll choose the, the one that suits your pensioner. And for my case, it was civil pension because he's a teacher. Then click next. Now, here is a summary of what you've been able to fill. You can click on these arrows to show a drop down of what you've been able to fill. If you made a mistake at this moment, you can click back, go edit the information as it is required before you submit for final scrutiny. So for this case, everything was okay. Now, by submitting this form, you acknowledge and accept full responsibility for the accuracy of the information provided. Additionally, you understand that any false information provided may lead to legal or administrative actions as deemed necessary. Now, all you need to do now is to check this box and click on submit. It's submitting. Now, details have been captured successfully. After that, it's going to load and bring you to this page. And here is now your account. Your account has been successfully created. All the information is here. You can be able to edit or view the submission. You can uh, click here to view and check whatever you've been able to submit. If you are not content with that, you can edit this very submission before they start checking it out. So once you submit this, uh, the National Treasury will go through the very uh, information that you've been able to fill on the registration and then they will also cross-check with their database. If it coincides with their database, then your account will be approved. If you filled something that is not correct, they will uh, point out the problem and maybe ask you through the email to be able to go and rectify or correct on the sections that you've not been able to fill correctly. And that's why I was telling you, be very careful when you are filling this so that you are not disqualified in the registration of this very process. I hope that this video helped you. Where you have not understood, feel free to go back and rewatch. Otherwise, if you loved this video, don't forget to like so that this video can be recommended to more people who are searching on how to register pensioners on the new pensioners registration portal. Otherwise, I want you now to click anywhere on the screen to watch our next video and I'm pretty sure that I will see you in our next video. Peace.